bastards, and welcome back once again to Lokum Kor Zugab Lolokokun Obak, Spear Cavern, the Grand Granite Shrine of Pillars. At this particular moment, the fortress is looking just fine. We are still working our way through our very first year here, but things are fairly settled for the moment. We have a decent little work area up here on the surface, stockpiles, trade depot, and our fortress below is all dug out as well. We have kitchens, stills, a meeting hall, food stockpiles, bedrooms, a nice little coiling trap hall over here filled with cage traps. And below that we have a hospital, offices, a barracks, and some more storage even. So we are looking pretty darn good. On top of that, I will note at this particular juncture that we have seven dwarves, of course, a number that will not rise anytime soon at least. And they are all in a stellar mood, every single one of them. We are perfectly on track at the moment. We just have to keep things steady. On that note, Rofa is still over here in the shrine. No worries on that front at the moment. The big bastard seems relatively content, though it does continually run out of its shrine after giant grasshoppers. It's killed four of them so far that we've seen, and it seems to do so relatively efficiently too. Really smashes those big bugs into paste. Terrifying. Rofa is not our primary concern here though, not at the moment anyways. We had mentioned recently that these savage areas are home to giant animals, well you've seen that, giant grasshoppers, and we have alluded to the dangers that they could cause, but going into a bit more detail with that, from what we understand, if we mess around too much in these areas, then it could cause some trouble along the lines of animals attacking us, like in force, I guess? I'm not too sure. All I'm saying is that if a horde of giant grasshoppers tries to rush into our fortress and devour our dwarves, I'm not going to be too happy about it. I think that would put a serious damper on our dwarves' moods, actually. We'll have to prepare ourselves. And speaking of giant pain in the ass animals, it looks like a giant buzzard just swooped in and stole some of our food, some prepared giant louse brain. We had just got there from the traders too. Well, that's a damn pity. Just took it right out of our trade depot, I assume. We're gonna have to get that stuff stored away. Though, you know, it does make me wonder if we can bait some animals into traps using food like that. Gonna have to put that to the test. These giant buzzards might be a good animal to get our hands on at some point. Any of these giant animals would be great if we can get some and then start up a breeding colony. These giant buzzards, for example, are three times larger than a dwarf, and I am certain that they would give us a lot of meat if we could get our hands on one. Even beyond just breeding the things, if we took one down, man, that could keep us fed for a while. Yeah, we'll have to see what we could do with these bastards. I'm telling you, if you can look past the murk and the sludge and the terrible stink, the Swamp of Brightness seems to have a lot of benefits. We just gotta learn how to put them to use. And on that note, if we have a look downwards underneath the sludge, we can see that the dwarves are putting things to use. Pop over here is digging a nice tunnel, just straight through the stone. But a tunnel to where, you might be asking? Well, it's of course leading to our new home. Spear Cavern proper. It's all planned out now. And doesn't that look nice? I think it's a fine size for a small dwarven clan like ours. It's certainly going to give us enough space. Now let me just explain the layout here. In the middle you can see a large, large area. And the roof above is being held up by these six pillars. I don't know what we're going to do in there. Probably a meeting hall, but I'm not sure. And then all around the sides there you can see seven small chambers. I say small, they're actually not small at all. They're quite large. Seven large chambers. And each of those large chambers has another chamber inside. And that smaller chamber is going to be a dwarf's house, while the surrounding chamber is kind of like their, you know, their little personal property, I guess. Little place for a workshop or something like that. And then if you look around the outside there, you can see that little tunnel. Just kind of going to be like an emergency tunnel. It connects up all the bedrooms from the back. It's like a little secret corridor, you know? I don't like the idea of having dwarves locked up in their houses if something goes down up on the surface, you know? Gotta have a way to move around. Uh, anyways, if we look upwards, just one space here, you can see that central meeting area, it extends upwards. We don't want a short little chamber, it's gotta be glorious, right? It's gotta have that good dwarven energy. There's plenty of space below ground, it might as well stretch out, right? And then if you have a look around the outside there, you can see those dwarven side chambers go up as well. Both the chamber itself and the dwarves' houses. That's gonna give the dwarves a ton of space to move around in. Really stretch out, give us some options in the future for, you know, if we want to do something else in there. And you can see that little bent tunnel that leads out the back of each of their bedrooms that leads down to the surrounding tunnel there. And actually, if we look up one more time, we can see the top level of that center chamber. It goes up three levels. It's going to be a titanic undertaking, but we have time. Our fortress is looking good right now, so we can just take all the time in the world just to carve this thing out. And just as a further note, moving back down to the bottom here, you can see this blue coloration. That's because it's just a blueprint, right? We're not going to carve that out just yet. The thing we're going to focus Focus on first is that gray tunnel up to the north. We're gonna dig that in, and at the end of it, there's a stairway that leads up 
to the very top of this central corridor. This is where we're going to start. Get it all carved out from the top down. It's going to be a spectacle. I'm telling you that much. Spear Cavern is going to be a fortress of legend. But we still have a ways to go on that front, of course. And as such, let us direct our attention back up here to Stepping Stone Fortress number two, where we can see our dogs in the meeting hall. Our original dogs, plus a new litter here. Our breeding program's getting off on the right foot already. And there's this one notable puppy here. We've dubbed her the Sky Dog because of her beautiful aqua eyes. And she looks to be very sturdy for a pup even. Only a few weeks old now, but still that muscle coverage. It's impressive. She's definitely the most promising specimen. And I think we're gonna set her aside for now. We don't really know what we're doing with this whole dog breeding thing when you get down to it. But I think with a little Sky Dog here, we're off on the right foot at least. We should make an area for the dog, shouldn't we? A kennel. That'd be a good idea, yeah. And we'll do it up here in our first stepping stone fortress. Might as well, it's just sitting there. There you go, pups. We'll check back in in a bit. Gotta have them outside to go to the bathroom and run every once in a while. Can't just keep them cooped up, but they'll be safe enough for now. And as for other projects we have going on at this particular moment, we have a couple workshops going smelting down iron, and we're still in search of more flux so we can make more steel. We know there's dolomite around here though, so it's not going to be a problem. And of course we're making charcoal as well from wood. We're chopping down an awful lot of trees. If we have a look down here underground, you can see our food stockpiles are looking great. We had Boggy turning all of our ingredients into meals, and so we're well stocked right now in prepared meals and drinks too. Not a problem. Everyone seems to be appreciating it, especially Wisp. Been going a little hard on the whip vine dumplings lately. I mean, who could blame her? They're delicious. And it's good too. A little bit of extra padding, you know? It gives you some more armor in combat. We should all be overindulging. It just makes sense. And then down here below in our barracks office hospital, you can see we have some new workshops in as well. Kind of really cluttering the place up, making it a bit smoky even. But it's just handy to have them down here. We're cutting up gems, making some stone blocks. And we have this other smelter here, making even more iron bars from limonite, hematite, and magnetite all of which we have access to here. I'm telling you, this place is loaded with resources. Ah, uh, but that's enough big talk for now. What about our dwarves? How are we feeling, dwarves? Well, there really isn't that much to report on at this particular moment. Only so much can change in eight and a half months after all. One thing I will note, however, is our outpost liaison over here. We haven't mentioned much about him, but the guy's been hanging around ever since we traded with those merchants. The merchants have left, of course, but he has not, not yet. His name is Sodel, and we're going to be seeing him every year, so we have to get used to his face at least, uh, assuming he doesn't get killed out here. Not too sure what he's doing exactly, but he doesn't appear to like going into our fortress, and instead seems to be opting for just sitting in this little nook right here. Uh, really not a bad little spot, it's just kind of next to our trade depot and our workshops and stockpiles and stuff. Just kind of tucked down there. There's been a couple times where he was scared off by giant buzzards and went running away, but he returns to this spot right here. I, I, again, I'm not sure why he likes it here, but well, I guess it's his prerogative. Just enjoying the scenery, perhaps. Maybe he's as mystified by this whole area as we are. It would make sense. Just again, hoping he doesn't get killed out here. It can be pretty dangerous in the Swamp of Brightness. Anywho, Sodel, take care of yourself. He should move off pretty soon, I'm thinking. Back inside the fortress here, down on the lower level, we could see Queen Bee and the crab working away at a couple of workshops in here. Queen Bee is cutting some gems right now, some rough praise opals just freshly dug up by Pop down below. This is a new thing for Bee. She hasn't cut gems before, and we've kind of had the dwarves in and out rotating, just uh, taking turns cutting gems because nobody really knows how to do it very well. And our hope in doing it this way is that all of our dwarves will kind of gain skills slowly over time. At some point, we'll have enough respectable gem cutters here, but we're not too, too concerned about it right now. Same goes for the crab at smelting. Back in the mountain home, we had other dwarves who would smelt down metal or make charcoal, while the crab here would focus on making armor solely. So yeah, this is a new thing for him too. Both these dwarves are doing very well. Just a very happy couple. Remember, they are involved with one another, and seemingly they don't have any problems with everyone knowing it all the time. Public displays of affection get kind of tiresome, but well, at least they're happy. We haven't noted it yet, but Queen Bee is our bookkeeper here in the fortress, with just a tiny little office down here on the side, and the crab is our manager. They both have very good heads on their shoulders, and either of them would make for a great leader, I think. A leader of a typical fortress, that is. All the managing of daily duties and whatnot. Of course, a fortress like this one here, Spear Cavern, can only be led by one dwarf. Tinny, of course. Tinny is up here right now in her bedroom, sleeping, in what she considers to be a fairly average bedroom. You know, if you have a look at these bedrooms, they're, they're very small bare bones. The only thing they have going for them is nice engraved walls. And that was all done by Queen Bee, who's a competent engraver. Just goes to show you, you don't need the best bedrooms around to make a dwarf happy. As for updates on our intrepid leader here, she's getting a little antsy. We came here to hunt monsters after all, and all we've taken down so far is that one measly alligator. We need something bigger. And we've been keeping our eyes open too, but we haven't seen that much. I mean, there was those giant buzzards there. But yeah, you know what? Let's go have a look. Maybe there is something out there. 
No, not really. We have some giant sparrows, but it'd be very difficult to get any sort of flying creature down. I was really kind of hoping to see more land-based creatures, you know? I don't know that we could ever get our hands on a giant sparrow. Of course, who really knows? Maybe with a touch of ingenuity, we can come up with something. You know what, though, actually? Um, what I am thinking is maybe we can head down underground farther. At this point, I'm going under the assumption we're not going to hit the caverns below when we're digging out our new fortress. I'm really hoping anyways. And that being the case, maybe we should do some digging around. We're not going to find many flying creatures in the caves below. There would be plenty of cool things to fight down there. Where are the opponents? Hmm. Yeah, we should make that a top priority, shouldn't we? Not all this fancy fort digging, eh? Yes, I do like that. Uh, you'll note here, by the way, the dwarves smoothing the floors and walls in our new fortress. This tunnel right here has been carved out entirely by Pop. And we figured while she clears out the stone, we could just get to work smoothing out the surfaces. There's going to be an awful lot of that going on. And the sooner we get to it, the better. Pop has now worked her way up to the top, the third level of that central chamber. And she's just kind of clearing away the northern side of it at the moment. She's doing a pretty okay job. She's not the best miner in the world, really. But she's going to get a lot of skill from this. One thing I am a bit concerned about when it comes to Pop here is the fact that she really does not like hard work. <laughs> And I mean, you could say what you want. You're a dwarf. You're supposed to like hard work, that sort of stuff. But it's not going to change the fact that this particular dwarf, our only miner who has a lot on her plate, doesn't really like working that much. And we do care about her. She's not griping yet. She's taking it like a champ, actually. But we do get concerned. It is a pretty tall order we've placed on her shoulders. Maybe after she gets that first layer carved out, she could take a nice long break. And hopefully at that point, she can mine faster too, so she can carve out more and more between breaks. Alternatively, we can have all seven of our dwarves start carving away too. We do have enough picks for everyone. That might be a good idea actually. But for now, everyone has a lot on their plates. So I think this is how we'll keep it for just the time being. Hang in there, Pop. It'll be worth it. Trust me. Still, maybe we'll have a little break and start carving out that downwards tunnel. It would be nice to get down to those caves. And maybe once we find them, Pop could do something else for a little while. Yeah, that sounds good. Good luck, Pop. And while we get that tunnel carved out, we're going to come up here and smooth out these walls and the pillars. That's how we're going to do it. Carve out the stone in the top layer of this chamber, and then smooth down all the walls, and then go down another level. Smooth out the walls, and then another level. So on and so forth. It's the most straightforward way. But that's not all we have to do. I actually just realized we should probably make some preparations before we get access to those dangerous caves below. Some more cage traps are in order, I think. Don't want to have too many disruptions while we're trying to work, you know? If we get some defenses up, at least we can work in peace. Of course, those caves do tend to sneak up on you sometimes, as we can see right here. It looks like we've already actually discovered the caverns. Without having any defenses in place, that's great. <laughs> well, at least these dwarves are handy with spears, right? Hmm, yes. Looks like a fairly standard cavern layout. Yeah, not a bad one. Plenty of space to stretch out in. We're gonna have to get those cages made so we can get out there safely. Shouldn't take too long. Actually getting incredibly eager now. This is gonna be great. Who's ready for action, dwarves? Rather, first we're gonna get to work making some mechanisms for those cage traps. We have none in reserve. It would be nice to have a stockpile of them around. And let's see here, Pop is carving out this tunnel. It's gonna be a long one. We're gonna need a place to put those traps. So the longer, the better, really. Having a bit of a closer look at the caverns here, seeing some interesting stuff out there. Like we have a lot of olivine. Don't usually find that much of it. Might be able to put it to use in some sort of a strange construction or something. Got a lot of potential, I think. In addition, we also have some gem clusters about. Some particularly valuable ones as well. Over here we have a whole bunch of diamond. Red diamond, yellow diamond, green diamond. All in this little cluster right here. That is interesting. We had heard that they discovered one of these maybe a decade ago or so in the capital. Carved it open and it was filled with magma. That's his story anyways. We'll have to be careful, but I'm sure it's going to work out just fine. Yeah, it looks to be a few clusters like that. Very interesting. Looks like we've stumbled upon a real treasure trove here, dwarves. We're almost there, too. Not going to break into the caves before those traps are in place, though. And uh, before you get your hopes too high there, Pop, I'm sorry, but we have one more little project for you. We're going to come up here into this section of tunnel that leads down to the caves and carve out a little, uh, we'll call it a mini fortress. Just because this area is so far away from our main fortress, I figured we could have a little stopover point. We're going to carve it into this cobalt vein right here. Just a couple rooms. I figure dwarves can stop here for a break if they need it, instead of having to walk all the way back up, you know? I think it'll be a good idea. We could use it for item storage, for mechanisms or cages or whatever, and you know, as a place for dwarves to rest too. That'd be a good idea, I think. There we go, how's that looking? Not too bad at all. And you can see too, if you look below, we're gonna plan out some small bedrooms for the dwarves too, individual bedrooms, just like we have up in the other fortress, but they're gonna be underneath, accessed by stairways. They'll pretty much be the same. 
I don't really know what dwarves will think about having multiple bedrooms. I mean, it couldn't be bad, right? Who could have a problem with having multiple places to live? This could only be good. Yeah, it's coming right together, and I think we're gonna dub this place the Cobalt Room. Not that it's made of cobalt, but the entrance is, kind of. And there you can see it's all carved out too. Once we have our main fortress done, I don't think it's gonna be quite as necessary as it is now, but I think this place would hold up pretty darn well as just a little side tavern. You know, the dwarves can just go in and hang out, away from the hustle and bustle of the fortress. It's never gonna have hustle and bustle, what am I talking about? Seven dwarves. I don't know, we'll do something with it. Maybe we'll open up our fortress to outsiders at some point. That seems dangerous and stupid, but, well, we're going to have a fortress of tough dwarves, aren't we? Might be an interesting little project. We'll see. Anywho, we're going to zoom out a little bit here and look downwards down this tunnel right here, where we can see this cage trap tunnel. And it looks like all those traps are in place now. Excellent. So I think we're good to break into the caves. Let's get to it. Uh, in a moment, I guess. It looks like Pop right now is in our meeting hall, just kind of uh, struggling to socialize. It seems she's tired of digging. I guess I couldn't blame her. Uh, oh, but there she goes. Yep, she's off and heading down. Okay, I'm glad she got that little bit of a break there. Not much, but this is going to be a quick project. You can have an actual break afterwards. How about? Okay, here we go. Cracking open those caves. We have access now. Careful dwarves, remain wary. Having one more glance out there, it doesn't look like there's much in the way of activity at this moment, which is just stellar. Um... Pop, I am sorry, I guess I lied. We're gonna have you come out right now and collect some gems and crack open a couple of these weird gem clusters too. I'm seeing more and more every time I peek out here. Like here's one right over here in the Eastern Caves. Look to be studded with star ruby. And I will note too that each of these clusters appears to be embedded into obsidian. Very strange. I'm hoping it's not magma in this thing. I don't think it should be. I mean, the stone is not warm. I guess that would be a dead giveaway. It's not wet either, so there's no water in there. It's probably just empty solid obsidian would be my guess or possibly more gems but just in case there's magma inside this thing we're gonna approach it from the top just so it can't come roiling out and melt pop that would not be good oh what the hell was that okay so it wasn't magma but it was fire <laughs> well it's good that we dug it out from the top then some sort of a gas pocket or something i guess must have had a reaction with the air we haven't seen something like that before we'll have to note that in the miner's journal luckily it didn't come spouting out the top or anything like that well it looks to be clear now so we're just gonna hack away those rubies and get that obsidian too maybe we can fashion it into some neat little swords might be something cool to trade or possibly we could use them in weapon traps too that might be a good idea well, anyways, we're going to let Pop have a little bit of a break right now. She's done so much work. And while she's resting, we're going to take a look at the Cobalt Room, which, as you can see, is coming right along. Got a smoothed out main area there with some furniture. All the furniture is made. Just have to get it in place now. Man, it's probably going to be nicer in here than the other fortress, ain't it? Might have to end up making this the main fortress, but eh, we'll see. We'll see. Not sure. Back over here at Future Spear Cavern, we can see that tunnel there that Pop carved leading upwards. And if we move up to the top, you can see it is all done now. Pop carved out this entire area by herself, and we have dwarves in here now smoothing out the walls. And after they're all smoothed out, we can continue downwards. But still, we're going to let Pop have a little bit of a rest. I'm afraid she's going to freak out at some point. We don't want that, obviously. She is holding it together well enough, but I do keep seeing her come into this meeting hall here and just wanting to desperately socialize with other dwarves who are all working. So it's not like she can just, you know, grab somebody to talk to. She kind of has to wait around for someone to pop up for a minute. She's doing it right now, actually. Hang in there, Pop. There's a lot we got to do. She is in a good mood right now. I will say that. In fact, she is in a fantastic mood. We just don't want that to change. You can see she did finish up business down here and carved out those star rubies. They're just laying on the ground here. They are incredibly valuable, and we are lucky to get these. We also had her carve out some other gems too, just nearby. We have some milk quartz here and some praise over this way, as well as some nice lapis right over here, and some peridot as well. All kinds of gems. And while Pop was out here, she reported hearing something. The caves have been very peaceful so far, but it seems like we're not alone. And indeed, we are not. Signs of combat. Death in the caves. Wrought by a group of serpent people, it looks like. There are seven of them, all armed with weapons, spears, and blowguns. This must be their home. All right, we're not going to encroach in their territory over here, and it doesn't look like they're going to bother us. I would dearly love to reach out to them, see if they could aid us or possibly vice versa, but I do have a sneaking suspicion that they would try to murder our dwarves if we made contact. We're just going to leave them be. The serpent men are described as being large white snakes with the arms and torso of a man. 
These creatures are evil and live far underground. Well, I'm not sure about them being evil necessarily, I mean, but as long as they stay over here and don't bother us dwarves, we will do exactly the same. How's that sound, snakes? Good? I sure hope so. Of course, on that serpentine note, I suppose we should be paying closer attention to our defenses. We still only really have those copper spears that we started out with. We do have a ton of iron that we're hoping to get turned into steel, but we haven't found that much flux stone yet. There is actually a good amount of flux stone up here, dolomite. We found some when we dug out the original fortress, but we haven't really been going out of our way to find more. We're being foolish by not having enough armor and weapons prepared, but we're getting to it right now, no worries. It's just, unfortunately, it's gonna require Pop to do some more digging. Pop. We appreciate you so much more than you know. Thank you so much, my friend. I do think, too, that we have to focus on making those spears first. We already have spears, but copper is not the best material, especially when you have steel available. So yes, we're going to have Wisp come down and start pumping out some spears. And after we have our seven, we're going to start focusing more on armor, made by the crab, of course. He's been eager to ply his skills. We've been here for a year now, actually. That's a long time to go without practicing your trade. No matter, though, once we're ready, he's going to be put to work for a long time, I think. There's a lot of armor we have to make. Anyways, back down here to our meeting hall, where once again, we're going to be focusing on Pop for a moment. You can see right now, she's actually enjoying a story being told by Boggy. He's telling Pop the story of Dumed Dorkult, the first queen of the Lancer of Oiling, and mother of our current king, Athel Great Tour. It's a story all our dwarves know very well, but I'm sure Pop appreciates hearing it nonetheless, assuming she can hear it with all these puppies around. My goodness. Yeah, there's been a couple litters born now, and these guys are running around all over the place. We'll have to get some of them set up on watch duty soon, I think. Anyways, Pop is in here right now, uh, not mining, and that's actually on purpose, because we've decided to switch things up a little bit, and instead, we're going to have Tinny do some mining. We figure, what the hell? She could take on the task for a little bit. She's not too skilled with it, but she's glad to lend a helping hand, that's for sure. Anything to keep these dwarves happy. I think she's going to be helping out Pop with the mining from now on. Just so neither of them have too much on their plates. It'll be for the best. Gotta keep everyone happy. And you know, actually, on that note, while Tinny has taken over mining, I'm certain she feels pretty bad about sending Pop down to carve out those dangerous gem clusters in the caves. And there are a few more out there. And so as long as Tinny has the pick, we might as well play the role of brave leader and continue on with the task. Like we have this cluster over here. Got a bunch of diamonds in it, but this particular cluster is damp. I have a feeling this one's going to be filled with water. In fact, I can almost guarantee it. Regardless, once again, we're going to carve it out from the top. Just better safe than sorry, you know? We don't have much experience with these clusters. Let's have a look. Yeah, sure enough, just a bunch of water. No big deal. Was kind of hoping to be some other surprise in there, but doesn't look to be the case. Just some boring water. Oh well. Well now, just having a little look around here. And there is another cluster right over this way here. Down in the southern caves. Gotta be worth a look, right? Good luck, Tinny. So far we've seen water, magma, and fire. Not expecting that much worse from this one. But we will be careful. Recap of our discovery down there just now. 
it would appear that fire, magma, and water are not the only things that can be found inside those gem clusters, which are now deemed to be extremely dangerous. We just cracked open that last one and that horrible monster crawled out as you saw. Luckily, Tinny is relatively unscathed, though she did take a couple of hits, that could have been really bad. Luckily, she jumped right away and fled, like a smart dwarf though. Uh, that being said, I'm not sure if we should crack open any more of those gem clusters. Some measly gems ain't worth it. Though, maybe we can devise some other technique down the line at some point. Right now, we're still recovering, so I'm not going to put any more thought towards that. Goodness, that could have been bad. As for that creature, it is obviously an unnatural thing. Who knows how long it was in that rock formation. Could have been thousands of years. Whatever it is, is not good. It is known as a clear devil. A very large, scaly horse twisted into humanoid form. It squirms and fidgets. Its clear scales are large and close set. Beware its poisonous bite. Oh, and there it goes. Right into those poor snakes. Well, those guys don't stand a chance, do they? Not much of a chance, that is. Although it looks like one of them got a good shot. Yeah, it looks like the demon must have been jabbed pretty badly and now no longer can use its legs. Well, that's fantastic for us. Not so good for the snakes. Honestly, though, they're doing better than I thought they would. They do have basic metal weaponry, but they are smaller than dwarves, don't have any armor, and their skill with their weaponry is probably not very good. You know, I, I do have a feeling after we get armed up that we might be able to finish off this horse, but for now, I think we're just gonna leave it out there. No sense in risking it quite yet. Those poor snakes, though. They didn't deserve to go out like that, and it was our fault too, I guess. Hmm. Not much could be done at this point. And right now, the dwarves are over here in the cobalt room trying to take a little rest, while Tinny goes over the horrors she just encountered out in the caves. That poor dwarf. We're all very happy she's doing well, especially Boggy. Yeah, actually, this is an incredibly rare encounter right here. Every single one of those beer cavern dwarves is relaxing right now. Just getting some food, having a drink, telling a story or two, trying to unwind a bit. And actually, if you have a look here, we have Sodel in here as well, our outpost liaison. This was the fellow who was strangely standing out in the swamp after the trade caravans left last year. I hadn't checked in on him for a little while, but last we saw it was like six months after the trade caravans arrived last year that he was still here, just standing out in the forest. Very strange. Well, he's here now, just kind of going over reports, giving us news from the homeland. Hoping there's nothing too devastating this time. No, nothing more terrible than what we saw last year. The elves and goblins are still marching on our homeland, but seemingly have not made much progress, so that's a good. I can almost guarantee they won't put a dent in us, just harassing us for no reason. They're probably bored. The rat bastards. Well, it's good it's not getting any worse over there, that's for sure. I suppose even if it were, though, we wouldn't be all too concerned. That's part of the reason we moved out here, after all. To get away from all that mess. Granted, we haven't done much in the way of legendary acts so far, but, you know, dwarfs gotta relax sometimes, too. And in service of that, we're gonna get an instrument down here, into the cobalt room. We made a couple of instruments out of the bones of that alligator that we killed last year. And this large one over here is a well-crafted alligator bone vumum, a huge stationary percussion instrument. It consists of a bone bowl. And how it works is the uh, musician will shake the bowl, you know? Yeah, it's a bit of an odd one, but it's like a traditional thing. The vumum. And as a bit of an accompaniment to our vumum, down in this chest here we have an alligator bone vabak which is a small handheld percussion instrument. It consists of a bone triangle that the musician strikes. They're both very simple, mostly for keeping a beat, you know? We have to get some more instruments in here if we're gonna play some actual music though. Maybe at some point, might be a good idea, huh? Actually, I think a much better idea would be to have a feast. Dwarves, we've done a fine job for our first year. We're coming right along in Spear Cavern's progress, and we still have a long way to go, but we're gonna get there. By Idrath's grace, we will. But yes, for now, we feast. This here is going to be a good time, my dwarves. And with that, my friends, we're going to start talking about some behind the scenes things. And this time I once again had the foresight to actually make a list of things to talk about so I'm not just rambling on about nothing. And so let's have a look here. Yes, there were questions about how I was able to locate this shrine here and embark on it. Well, now I had installed DF Hack which is something I don't screw around with too much. I just figure, you know, just kind of spice up the beginning. Maybe we could embark in an unusual area. Actually, I had put it up to a vote in my Patreon. There were a couple different areas that we could have embarked into. There was this shrine here. Then there was a labyrinth with a minotaur in it, I think. And then there was a destroyed fortress that we were going to try to reclaim. But the shrine won out, and so here we are. 
pretty good choice, I'd say. Seems to be working out anyways. These dwarves do have an abundance of character. I'm actually pretty well pleased at how well we've been able to characterize them so far, and I hope you like that too. I feel like I was able to get a better grasp of them through making the uh, animated intro that you saw at the beginning of this episode. Haven't done one like that in a while. Actually, the last full intro I made was back when I did the Crimson Trumpets series. That was in 2021 actually, but I want to bring it back, you know? They are a gigantic pain in the ass, but it's worth it. And again, I really hope you liked seeing that. I actually started trying to keep track of how long this one was taking me, and there were a couple of days where I would work for maybe like, you know, between four and five hours and get like one and a half second of animation. <laughs> and it's not like it's high quality animation or anything either, you know? I couldn't imagine how long it must take for an actual animator to do something interesting crazy stuff. Ooh, actually, uh, something I meant to mention last episode is the, that, you know, the, this is a savage area here. And I've heard a lot of people talking about savage areas, uh, biomes, since a Steam release came out, and how you can be attacked by animals. And I'm a little weirded out that I haven't seen anything about that so far in our game here. I had heard that if you chop down a bunch of trees and you get attacked by animals, like a swarm of animals will just descend upon you. And reportedly, this could happen like right at the beginning, just as soon as you start touching the trees at all. I do recall hearing something about it being toned down though, but I don't know how much. I am still very on my guard in this area. Like the giant animals aren't usually a big problem. That giant alligator that we saw last episode, that could have been a problem, but like, it's not a hostile thing, really. If we had a group of animals, like those giant buzzards show up, and that were actually like hostile and acted like invaders, which is what I assume they do during the animal attacks, then we could potentially be in quite a bit of trouble. But I don't know. I've really got no experience about this. Like cards on the table too, like I'm, I'm totally truthful there. It's easy to go online and just like check and look into stuff, but I don't like doing that when I'm playing, if I can help it. Speaking of which, those little gem clusters below ground, I know quite a bit about those things. I knew that demons could be found inside them, or rather, I wasn't sure if it was actually demons or whatever, like, that's what some people online were saying, but, you know, I take it with a grain of salt. I hadn't heard that fire could be found inside those clusters like we saw in this episode here. Luckily, carving down from the top seems to really make it ineffective. I'm not sure if it would act differently if we dug into it from the side, like if it would come bursting out like magma or something, I don't know, but I guess I'm glad we didn't find out. It seems like digging down from the top is the best way to handle any of those clusters, so far anyways, until I figure out something better. I was kind of wondering what it would be like if we dug up from underneath sometimes, you know? Might be an interesting test. Something I am thinking is that like, because the inside of those clusters is hollow, you could drop a rock plug onto them from above, and it would like crush the middle of them, killing any demons or anything that would be in there. And then you'd be able to gain access to all those diamonds and star rubies or whatever, just no problem whatsoever. That being said, I do know there's other things that could be found inside those clusters too interesting items that I would dearly love to get my hands on. Again, this isn't something I've checked into big time, but I was playing in a succession game on my Discord at one point, and I dug into one of these clusters, and I found a two-handed sword. It was an artifact made out of uh, multicolored metal, which is like a angelic metal, like a celestial thing, you know? Very interesting. I would like to find something like that in Spear Cavern. I want to carve open more of these things, but just having that confirmation that demons could pop out like that, um, Tinny was very lucky to get away with her life in this episode. That would have sucked some major ass if she bit it. I know I was talking about either the crab or Queen Bee taking over leadership if something happened to Tinny, but I didn't think it would be quite this soon. I kind of, you know, because I pause the game a lot when big stuff is going on and like, I move at a glacial pace. You don't see this when you're watching the episode, but you know, like when the demon pops up, she was able to get away, she scampered away. And then I have to like micromanage everything. I gotta, you know, set her squad orders, make sure she's not gonna be like part of the military so she doesn't get unusually brave. And then I was like setting up traffic routes so that she wouldn't go anywhere near where the demon was and just like, you know, hope she didn't see the thing. But like while this is going on, I'm also like, okay, Tinny's probably not gonna survive this thing. I'm trying to like <laughs> get used to the idea that she's not gonna be alive for much longer in my mind and like before she got back to the fortress I'm like okay goodbye Tinny <laughs> but she pulled through got very lucky micromanagement be praised that being said yeah I don't know if I'm too too interested in carving open any more of these clusters just yet for now I'm actually pretty excited about this feast that we're gonna have that should be a lot of fun I love drawing the dwarven food hoping I get to do some more of that 
Anyways, that's it for my list of things to mention, I suppose. And we are getting down there. So, my bearded bastards, I want to thank you genuinely for watching. I've gotten quite a few very kind sentiments recently, and I'm starting to realize how much these videos mean to some people. I don't know. Just heartwarming, I guess. <laughs> thank you for watching. And I hope to see you next time here in Lokam Kor Zugab Lolokokun Obak Spear Cavern, the Grand Granite Shrine of Pillars. And until then, you bearded bastards. Psst.